Hello, my name is Lynn Gillespie, and I will be your guide to discover the 12 high-performance garden characteristics with weekly training videos. A high-performance garden is one of the most fun, productive, and organic gardening experiences you will ever have. A garden that is enjoyable, weed-free, productive, and so very easy to achieve. Hi, I'm Lynn Gillespie, organic farmer and creator of the Abundance Garden and the Leafy Greens courses. We are here today to teach you about the high performance characteristic number nine, which is extending the growing season. This is the third video in our cool season garden series. Today we're going to learn about what we can grow in the fall in zones one and two. If you don't live in zones one and two, watch anyways because some of you will experience the same conditions later in your growing season. I want to start talking about the specific zones and what is possible to grow in the cool season. It's important to talk about the cooler zones first so they can get started. The warmer zones can start planting later and will have more varieties that they can grow. But the cooler zones can grow some amazing food even if it gets cold sooner. So in zones one and two, you are always in a cool season garden. You guys actually never get to the warm season garden. So you'll be familiar with the plants that we're gonna grow here. So for your fall crop, we're gonna start in August, but be prepared for frost at any time. And the best bet for you is actually to grow in a greenhouse, a cold frame, or at least make sure that you have some covers. So we'll, we will have a video on the frost protection in a few weeks. So we will go over the covers and stuff for you here in, an, in the next couple weeks. And the other option for you is to grow your plants in a pot in a sunny location. And then if it's cold at night, just take them indoors. You can put them in the garage or into the heated house. The best plants to grow are arugula, claytonia, vit, beet greens, mustard greens, spinach, Swiss chard, bok choy, kale, and lettuce. So I buy my seeds from Johnny Selected Seed and Seed Savers Exchange. They, they both companies have really great seeds that you can grow in the fall. If you want to start your plants just a little bit earlier, then you want to start them in July. You can start them in a pot and then transplant them into your garden or into your bigger pots um, in August. The other thing that you can do is you can sow directly into your garden or into your pots in August. So your plants will grow pretty good outside until you start hitting 25 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. At that point, you need to make sure you have your good covers and or that you can take them inside. Now there is one plant that I've taken down to 16 degrees Fahrenheit without any covers at all. And that's my kale plants. And what I do is they'll be outside. If they get frozen, I just don't harvest them until they've thawed out. What I learned is that if you harvest the plants while they're frozen, those leaves will turn black and mushy in your hands. But if you let the plant naturally thaw out on its own, make sure the temperature is above freezing, then you can go out and pick those plants and they won't turn black and mushy. So having fresh greens in the fall is great for your diet and your budget. Go ahead and get a few seeds and give it a try and enjoy some fresh salads. If you're wanting to grow some fresh greens indoors, Come along with me to one of our greenhouses in the middle of winter to learn how to start pea shoots. And stay tuned for the end of this series. We are going to learn more about growing indoors through the winter, and this will really apply to you people living in zones one and two. Hello everybody and welcome. Today we are gonna grow some pea shoots. This is one of my most favorite foods in the winter. We can't grow peas outside right now because everything's covered in snow, but we can grow these wonderful pea shoots inside and they taste just like fresh garden peas. So it's a great addition to any salad. It's really easy to do, so I'm gonna show you how we do it here at the Living Farm. So the first thing we do is we uh, get a tray. This is a tray with holes in the bottom. This is a standard greenhouse tray. It's about two inches deep. And to that, we're gonna add some potting soil. And this has sand, perlite, and peat moss in it. Gonna fill up the tray. Oh, a little over half. Okay, we we'll smooth our soil out. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna add is some uh, pea seeds. You can use any kind of pea seeds that you want. Sometimes uh, there's pea seeds just for 
sprouting like this that are a little cheaper, but if you have a packet of old garden pea seeds, you can use that. Um, this is a spray can lid. It holds about three quarters of a cup. And I'm just going to take those and sprinkle the seeds right onto the soil. Like that. And we're going to cover them over with at least a half an inch of soil over the top. And you want to be sure that there's no fertilizer or compost in your soil because peas are nitrogen fixing and they create their own soil, their own fertilizer. And so you don't want to inhibit their growth by adding fertilizer. So just straight potting soil, no fertilizer. Okay, you get that smoothed on and then we're going to water it on the floor down here. So as soon as you get planted, you want to soak it down really good, lots of water. Okay, now we're going to let that drip on the floor just a little bit. And then what you want to do with that is you want to take it and put it in a warm location. Um, if you have like a place in the house that's 60, 65 degrees, uh, that's perfect to get that to germinate. Now, if you have it in a warm place, in about a week, it's going to look like this tray here. And if you take a look at this tray, you can see that the soil is bulging because there's a whole bunch of peas coming up underneath. And if you look right here, you see the little peas. They're just, just starting to curl up and come up. You want to be sure you keep this moist. And once you start to see them starting to curl like that, then you need to put the tray someplace where it can get some light. And you got a couple of choices. Um, the best place would probably be on a light table, something with some fluorescent lights that can shine down on it. And you want the lights to run at least 12 hours a day. The other choice would be like a south window. Um, you can even put these like if you have a greenhouse that stays, oh, let's say above 35 at night. Um, I've actually taken them at this stage and frosted them lightly, clear down to about 30 degrees. And they grow. It's just a little bit slower. So once you find the perfect location for them, uh, make sure they stay moist. And then after, oh, let's say a week to 10 days, then they start to look like this. Where the pea shoots are coming up, they got the light, so they're turning green. And the next thing they'll do is the leaves will unfold. And that's this tray here. So once you get to about three weeks, then the peas are going to flush out. And they'll look like little pea plants that you have in the garden. And this is the stage that we eat them at. And so what I do is I take my scissors, and I'm just going to grab the plant. And I'm just going to shear these off above the soil. Now, if you are careful with this and you shear it to where there's still a leaf joint left, this will actually regrow and you can get a second cutting off of it or a third. So you do get a couple chances at these. So you want to just trim those off and um, you just eat them straight up. Mm. Oh my gosh. They are so delicious. They're sweet and crunchy and they, they taste like spring. So. This is super easy to do. I hope you guys will give it a try and this will become one of your favorite winter greens. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to learn the specifics of our high performance garden growing system so you have an amazing cool season garden, then enroll in our Leafy Greens Container Garden course or our Abundance Garden course. In these courses you will learn the details, instructions, and gardening secrets. You will also get gardening coaching to help you get your garden up and running well. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week for another edition of the High Performance Garden video training series. Want access to more videos like this? Click the link in the description below this video to join the High Performance Garden community for free. Community members receive weekly High Performance Garden video trainings, articles, and trade secrets delivered directly to your inbox. Do you know anyone else who is frustrated and struggling with their garden? Share this video so they can begin to transform their garden into a high performance garden too. They'll thank you later. If you want to transform your garden into a high performance garden in one season, you can enroll in the Abundance Garden course, the only gardening course where you can garden step by step with your gardening coach. Click the link in the description below this video to learn more about the Abundance Garden course. If you have a topic you would like us to make a video about, please send us an email 
or if you have a gardening question, you can also email us at thelivingfarm at tds.net. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. May your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.